Well, hello everyone. It's that time of week, Q&A time. It's where you tweet questions, I give answers. Such a novel concept that literally probably millions of other people have done before. But we try to have some fun with it along the way. Thanks to all of you that submitted your questions. I'm going to pull them up now. Let's go ahead and get started and see if we can get this done in 15 minutes or less. Just like good sex should be if you take out any foreplay. 15 minutes or less. That was Smokey saying, and we abide by it. Anyways, moving on. Sue Pete Corvin kicks us off by asking, what would you do specifically to make Bobby Lashley interesting? Take everything WWE has done with him and do the exact opposite is probably a really good place to start. WNC Podcast. How long should Braun Strowman chase Roman Reigns before winning, and does he really need to cash in and win the title? Second part of that first, yes. He needs to cash in successfully and win the title. You've got to validate the guy at some point in time. As far as how long he should chase him, I honestly don't think it should be that long. No later than Survivor Series. Really, next pay-per-view, it needs to be a wrap. Wrestling Ramble. Will it be Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon or Ronda Rousey versus one of the Bellas to main event Evolution? That's screaming out Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella at Evolution, isn't it? I'd have to assume that's going to be the main event. I would think. I would think. Son Goshuaku. Thoughts on Ronda Rousey's progress so far in WWE? I feel like she's been solid. Presentation of her has been okay. That shit she wore on her face at SummerSlam, let's try to never, ever, ever, ever do that again. Let's try not to ever do that again. It's just a crazy thought, so crazy, it might be the right idea. Um, but she's doing all right. So far, so good. Returns have been relatively positive. So nothing to complain about, really, for me at this point. Hug life for life. Did Peyton Royce block you on Twitter after you defended Dave Meltzer like you did? Well, if she blocked me, I've been blocked by better. If she blocked me, she wouldn't be the first and most certainly won't be the last. Bunch of bitches and crybabies out there in the world today. Um, I don't know. I don't didn't check. And frankly, I don't care. It's not like I followed her before. Not like I'm going to follow her afterwards. So I could give a flying flip less. Couldn't. I just couldn't give a flying flip less. Gives a shit. Devlin asked, will you be watching All In? The very simple and satisfying answer to that is, fuck no! But that doesn't so much have to do with just rebelling against Cody Rhodes and everything that he represents. It's just the fact that I'm working Saturday night and I'm not going to feel like wanting to go back and watch it afterwards. I'm going to be trying to get laid Sunday. What would I rather do, watch All In or get laid? I go with the get laid, thank you very much. Junior, has WWE lost fans during the Roman Reigns era? Well, they most certainly have not gained them. It's probably stagnant to slightly decline, and, and it's easy to just point to the guy that's leading the era and say solely, exclusively, it is his fault. But similar to John Cena, where there is a contributing factor in a part, it is not the entirety of the story, and nor is that person solely and exclusively responsible. Same thing applies here. Um, but I can't imagine they have gained fans during this time. Uh, they've lost some, sure. M.I.M. Arsenal. Why are there no great managers or valets in wrestling today? I think there's a variety of different factors for uh, the way wrestling is structured now. Everything is still built, ultimately funneled to the WWE. And the WWE has de-emphasized them. The WWE has devalued them. As a result, it's been de-emphasized throughout the rest of the lower levels of professional wrestling. As far as why WWE de-emphasized the managers, the valets, I think they ultimately felt like they didn't need them, which is foolish and ridiculous. But they thought these mouthpieces at a certain point no longer carried the type of value because they wanted to emphasize for a while. Uh, the wrestlers themselves, the stars, the sports entertainers, and then they just wanted to emphasize the shield, the brand of WWE. Uh, they feel like it's a waste of money to pay somebody that's not ultimately going to work in the ring. Again, it's foolish, but it's what it is. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that everybody really wants to be a wrestler that gets into the business. 
I see a lot of people wanting to be great managers and great valets, and if they don't want to be, then they're most certainly are not going to be, and they're not going to stick with it. So there's a lot of different reasons why that is. It's unfortunate. It sucks because not everybody is meant to wrestle. Not everybody should wrestle. And not everybody's best contribution to professional wrestling is wrestling. I'm a major fan of incorporating people in the way that gets the most you possibly can out of them, utilizes their strengths the most, minimizes their weaknesses the most, and brings something different and new and positive to the product. If you've got guys that can talk their ass off, but they can't wrestle, then why have them wrestle? Like it even goes back to the whole Enzo Amore thing. The guy could cut a promo. The guy could talk. The guy couldn't work worth a shit in the ring. So why try to make him a wrestler? Make him a star as a manager. Make him a snivelly, snidely, fucking, weaselly heel manager that gets other people over. Make him a star that way. Doesn't have to work in the ring. Is what it is. Jordy asked, is the shield the definition of overrated? And I talked about this, I think, just a couple days ago. Um, some ways yes, some ways no. I mean, part of the measurement of good faction is when you look and you say, okay, what came out of the faction and who became bigger because of the faction? You could ultimately say that all three guys that were involved, Reigns, Ambrose, Rollins, were all better off because of their involvement in the shield. They became three of the WWE's kind of cornerstone guys. So in that sense, it most certainly was not overrated. It most certainly was not a failure. It was a massive success for the company. From a standpoint of people pretending like this faction did so many great and awesome things and was a great and awesome faction, in that case, yeah, I do feel like it is overrated. Rick Styles. Will WWE keep Rousey undefeated, only defeat her to Charlotte at WrestleMania? Well, you know, here's the thing. You can't have Rousey go undefeated forever because there's going to be something to the story of similar to UFC. What happens when she gets smacked in the mouth the first time by somebody legit and she loses? How is she going to respond? There's a lot of potential for possibility with that type of story. And in fact, from the WWE standpoint, that's probably where the potential to make the most profit is. Is off of her losing that first time, making it count, making it mean something, making it significant, and the rebound story for Rousey. That's where the big money is going to be, if anywhere. Uh, is that entirely possible? Absolutely. Trying to send a message to Rousey at WrestleMania? That sounds like the type of shit Hunter, Steph, Vince would be very much down for. Um, I would not be surprised at all if they fed her to Charlotte. I would not be at all. Who, who, who would be surprised if that was the case? Um, I wouldn't. Uh, Charles Mitchell, similar question in a way. Who do you think will beat Ronda Rousey for her women's championship? I think the betting favorite right now probably has to be Charlotte, unless they do like a champion versus champion match at WrestleMania, uh, where neither belt is technically on the line. Um, otherwise, maybe it'd be Shayna Baszler, because there'd be history and story there. Somebody that they could present and package as being somewhat believable to beat Rousey. So it's either going to be Charlotte because of name, pedigree, nepotism, and politics, or it's going to be Shayna Baszler because they go in a different direction. Those would be the two that I would envision being most likely to beat Rousey for her title. Randy Wolf, what is your favorite era in WWE? You know, I think it still have to go back to the Hogan expansion era of the mid late '80s and early '90s. It's what I grew up on. It's what made me love professional wrestling. You know, there's so many things that going back and watching it. Sure, some of the matches may not hold up to today's standards, but that gives a shit. When you talk about the personalities, the characters. The ability for guys to talk on the mic, the way they developed stories, the way they actually had stories, the way those stories were able to play out over an extended period of time and stay fresh. Uh, that will always be my favorite era of WWE. Ashwin, is Roman Reigns the most overpushed, overprotected guy in wrestling or at least WWE history? The simple answer to that is no. The real answer is John Cena. Now, six, seven, eight years from now, as more time elapses, you can ask me that question about Roman Reigns, and I may have a different opinion. I may have a different story. But right now, in no way, shape, or form does Roman Reigns even closely measure up to John Cena. That's no way, shape, or form. Alfredo Regalado, who do you think Triple H is going to face at WrestleMania 35? Excellent question. Could it be a Kurt Angle? Could it be The Rock? God's going to get a Mania match, and he's going to get a big one. Ugh. You know what's coming. It's just a question of who. 
Jared Orla, why can't you join the WWE creative team and help guys with talent and skills get over like I think you can? I appreciate that, but number one, in order to work for WWE, you can't, it, as a creative team member, you can't really know wrestling. Number two, you have to have a college degree. So I'm out on the first, I'm out on the second. Number three, why the fuck would I want to work for that type of company in that type of toxic environment and have to live somewhere like Stamford fucking Connecticut? I'm good, dog. I'm good. Maybe several years ago I had some thoughts or visions or delusions of grandeur of that shit. I have absolutely none of them at this point in time. Believe me. Believe me. Tony Selby, would you be willing to start doing impact reviews again as I've heard they're getting a lot better? Uh, at the particular moment, no. It probably would be something I would explore as we got into 2019 and got away from football season. But right now, working the two jobs, doing this, I just don't have a ton of free time. And that would require free time that I frankly just don't have right now. Um, so the answer is no, not right now. Check back with me as we get into 2019. Vols fans, should WWE align with Bobby Lashley with Paul Heyman? I'd rather them not go down the lather, rinse, repeat angle with that, with uh, Heyman with somebody from the mixed martial arts wrestling world like they did with Lesnar, but they could do worse, but it wouldn't be my ideal choice. Victor Tran, how would wrestling be today if a WCW-style company was actually there to compete with WWE? Well, you most certainly would hope that it would mean better things for wrestling, better things for the fans, better things for the wrestlers. It would force the WWE out of their complacency. It would force the WWE to really have to give a crap. It would force the WWE to have to do different things. It would force the WWE to not be so out of touch and have to go more of the, get with the grain in terms of what the audience is telling you they want. Um, so it would be an overall net positive, big, bigly, to borrow a phrase from somebody else. Frederick Lowhouse, was it weird not to see John Cena at SummerSlam? Honestly, a little bit, yeah. I mean, you're starting to get used to not seeing him at some of the bigger shows, but it was still weird to not see Cena at SummerSlam. Horror Movie Review 73, which commentator is worse, Corey Graves or Byron Saxton? It's like choosing between vomit and diarrhea of the explosive variety. They both are really painful, and they both really, really suck. But vomit tends to leave a bit of an aftertaste. Um, Corey Graves, to me, is vomit. So... I'll go, uh, he is worse, but it's really, really close. And then Leonardo Batman. Do you think an SJW group in a right to censor type of mold would be a great idea? That would be fucking fantastic. It would be absolutely phenomenal. Easily the most over heel act you'd have in all of professional wrestling if Bullet Club turned heel tomorrow, but the WWE responded by creating a real true SJW faction. The Bullet Club can eat shit because nothing can measure up to the heat that the SJW group is going to get. I mean, they could be talking about all types of things. About how people are polyamorous and they're pansexual and this and that and they're LGBTQ way whatever the hell it is. They could be talking about how oh, this is offensive and that's offensive and how any fucking thing can be offensive in today's world. They could be marching out there protesting against wrestling journalists who are talking about they liked women better when they didn't have the fake tits. Oh, that's heat. That's real heat. Have them coming out wearing Bernie shirts, talking about socialistic principles. Oh, baby. Now, that's a heel faction I could get behind. Fuck yeah. That would definitely help make wrestling fun again. Well, that's it for this Q&A. Thanks to everybody for your questions. This was fun. Do it again next week. In the meantime, I'm the Schlag Day. This is OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need.